In this video, I'm going to tell you the concept of shared server connections. Now, in one of the initial introduction videos, I told you that whenever a user connects to a database, the connection request goes to the listener and then the listener spawns off or starts a new server process and then the server process and the user keep communicating with each other. The listener is out. I have a bunch of users. There could be n number of users. All of them log in in the morning or they log in whenever they come into office. Maybe you run a pre-shift organization. So people log in and what's going to happen is by the default mechanism, it will contact the listener and then a dedicated server process is going to be created. And in the previous video, I told you that's a lot of resources lying idle. Instead, we can make use of what is called that shared server process to optimize the resource utilization. So what's going to happen instead of creating a dedicated server for each user who connects, we pre-create, we already configured two components, one called as dispatchers and another called as shared servers. They are also processes, just like how we have PMON, SMON, DBWriter are all background processes. These are also processes. But the only thing is we group a bunch of processes as dispatchers and a bunch of processes as shared server process. Now there are parameters which you can use in a database called dispatchers and shared servers through which you can configure them. Now, what is the objective of a dispatcher? The dispatcher's responsibility is to manage connections. So instead of showing it this way, I will say a particular bunch of users will get assigned to a dispatcher. So whenever a user request comes for a connection purpose, I said there is a listener, the user will contact the listener and the listener will hand off the connection to a dispatcher instead of to create a new server process dedicated for it. So what happens is, let us say I configure in such a way, each dispatcher will manage 10 connections. Whenever a user submits a SQL, the SQL will come to the dispatcher, but the dispatcher is not going to process the query. Now, to understand this a little bit easier, if you go to a restaurant, you go and sit in a table. Somebody waits for you who takes orders from you but he is not the cook. You can consider the dispatcher similar to that of a waiter or a person who helps you out in making your orders. And then there's a cook who makes the actual food. In an Oracle database, the cooks are nothing but the database shared server processes. Now, whenever a request comes in for SQL from a given user, the dispatcher gets the request and puts it into what is called as a request queue. So as and when users keep dropping in requests, the requests will get lined up associating who is the user who made that request. A request view is a common request queue. Now any server process who is free can pick up the request process just like how a dedicated server process processes a request, a shared server process is going to process this request. Once the request is processed, then there is a response queue because look at it. Anybody can pick up the request and process, but when a response has to be given, it has to go to the corresponding user, right? So the response will be put in here. Then the dispatcher can go and look into each user's response queue, pick it up and give it back to the user. So by doing so, if I were to have hundred users, in my database to be connected, I don't need to start 100 process. If I were to say that, okay, I'm going to have 100 users, I'm going to make dispatchers manage 10, 10 connections each, I just create 10 dispatchers. Or to even further optimize it, create just five dispatchers, each managing 20 connections. But then the catch is, how many dispatchers should I start? Well, the answer is pretty obvious. If you know that on an average, you're going to have 100 users, and you know our user is going to give in a request once in every 20 seconds on an average then you know a user is going to give a request only once in 20 seconds maybe i can make a dispatcher to manage 20 connections so go by the average of how many requests will a user typically go in and then organize it then 
set up shared servers. Setting up shared servers is simple. How many concurrent requests will come at any given time? Accordingly, you need so many concurrent shared servers available. If the concurrent servers are less than the number of requests coming in, you will have queue piling up here. If the number of shared servers are less than the number of requests in the queue, there is a queue that is going to pile up, which is going to delay response time. On the other hand, if the number of shared servers are more than the requests coming in into the queue, then you'll end up having a situation where you're wasting resources. So the idea behind a shared server connectivity enables you to optimize server side processes in terms of resources for PGA, CPU, etc. Now here is one important aspect. When we had dedicated server process, we said each one of them had a PGA, right? Now again here also, there is PGA available. There is PGA available, but remember, PGA can be used for two things. One is to keep user session variable info plus to do sorting or joining. There is memory usage that comes in. So the PGA memory that is available here will be used for sorting and etc. But user specific values like variables or values assigned etc. cannot be kept here because this server process could be doing a request for any one of the users. So when you land up having PGA used only for sorting where do i keep the user environment settings that comes in in what is called as a user global area which by default gets into the shared pool so now when this server process is going to pick let's say user 3's request it will capture what are the variables and its current state from the uga rather than going and searching through the pga of whoever processed it earlier so there is an additional memory overhead that comes in but if you look at it overall overall the total resource utilization is going to be averaged out just like how instead of creating one cook for each table and then asking that cook to serve that person where the cook could be idle when the people are eating their food same is happening here and you don't have a waiter specific to every table either your waiter might be waiting for multiple tables and thereby i reduce the overall overhead in terms of processing requests for users when I know these thick client based users do have idle time and when I know there is idle time I don't want to start unnecessary processes server process instead I manage it with a bunch of dispatchers and shared servers so that's about when we are using thick clients and how do we optimize resources on the server side